Well, how are you? Welcome back to the Painting in the Pandemic show, live from the Safira Ventura Gallery here in Midtown Manhattan, where we bring cutting edge artists to the market. Now we do it digitally. Tonight, uh, Neil's gonna soon introduce you to our two contemporary artists. But uh, since the, the topic tonight is the difference between modern and contemporary art, we just like to tell you that modern art, for those of you who, who do not have the background of our artist and Neil Kerman, uh, uh, modern art was created between 1860 and 1960, mostly including the Impressionists, the Cubists, the Faubists, and the Surrealists. They were the first ones that experimented in breaking with the natural reality and breaking from all conventions, painting what you saw or sculpting what you saw. And of course, most of them are no longer living. Uh, if you're living today, you've got to be in the 90s or 100. Contemporary artists are currently living artists, mostly, and they comment on social issues through their art. They have to say something, and it doesn't have to be realistic, pretty, or even aesthetic. Uh, it, some of it could even be psychedelic. And all techniques are, are used today, including architecture, sculpture, natural and man-made articles, which our two artists tonight use. So including in that category are postmodernist, feminist, pop art, minimalist, and even street art like Basquiat. Those are all contemporary artists. Think MoMA, Museum of Modern Art, modern art up till 1960. Guggenheim, very contemporary. You can walk in there and not know what you're looking at. It has to be explained to you. Some modern artists you should think of are Van Gogh, Picasso, Manet, Monet, Chagall, Klimt, Munch, Dali, Degas, Renoir, and contemporary is Basquiat, Warhol, Hakti, Jeff Kuhn, today very hot, Al Weiwei, and Damien Hirst, Jackson Pollock, Roy Lichtenstein. Tonight, Neil's gonna introduce you now to two contemporary artists, uh, one from Ecuador, Spain, uh, Monica Sarmiento Archer, and one who has uh, a couple of different names. Her name is Jennifer Okamuro. She has a <laughs> phenomenal background, and she's currently now in Boston. Take it away, Neil. Hi there. Um, first of all, we have something exciting tonight. Jennifer is also going to talk about sacred activism, and Monica is going to give us a little bit on constructivism. Both of you, I'm very much into the isms. One thing I want to say is good luck in your speak slowly, clearly. We're going to be speaking with Jennifer first. Monica, you're going to go into the waiting room, and then we will bring you on. I am the keeper of the clock. <laughs> so, Erica, let's have Jennifer on, please. There you go. Jennifer, Hi. it's amazing. Hi. Hi. You help women artists. You grew up in Philadelphia, one of my favorite cities. You received a Master's of Fine Arts from the University of Boston. You are a fine art consultant, an adjunct educator of the Museum of the Fine Arts in Boston. You sat and perhaps still sit on the board of president board as president and founding exhibition chair to the National Association of Women Artists. And your works are powerful and enlightening and is influenced by your heritage of both Eastern and Western culture, as well as the culture of sacred activism. Um, so can you tell us why you would consider yourself if you do a contemporary artist? Uh, I would, absolutely. So uh, I would definitely say I'm a contemporary artist because um, for me, it's not just it's not just an expression of being an individual. It's it's actually bringing in social impact and um, things that are influenced around me. So I'm highly influenced by my color palette, depending on my mood, depending on what I'm reading. Um, I love poems, so for me, I'm, I get very I, I get I get very inspired and moved by poems and everything around me. So. Jennifer, um, why yeah. is your activism sacred as opposed to others? <laughs> well, I guess it could. I guess all of it could be sacred, but <laughs> I would say it's sacred because, um, for for me, uh, I would 
for me, I really try to, um, it's sacred in the sense that I try to find the balance between the conflict and harmony in things, um, where, whether it deals with the issues that are um, in play right now in the news or what I wrote, read about, but I really try to incorporate that into my form and the energy of the, my artwork. And I, that's why I think it's sacred because um, each piece really balances and incorporates that conflict balance and harmony, so. You know, you stated, or there was a statement that you made from Andrew Harvey, who of course teaches and practices mystic traditions, said it best when he said, if you're really listening, if you're awake to the poignant beauty of the world, your heart breaks regularly. In fact, your heart is made to break. Its purpose is to burst open again and again, so it can even hold more wonders. Beautiful. Is that you? Does that it break was, open and close yeah. and open? <laughs> I mean, I definitely have a strong Aries personality, but um, I the one thing is I've always I've always been that person that people come over and they they tell you they I sit on the train and people will tell me their whole life story and I've said I haven't even said a word to them and I'm not even sure why they're telling me their story. And I think that it's just there's something about that that's inside of you and people can see it and you can't help but to you know take that kind of the beauty of the world but also realize that what comes with beauty there's also um there's also things that are not as beautiful and and pretty um but at the same time it's you know um, you have to, it's, it's finding the balance, being able to release um, and finding, you know, the power, the hunger and all that, um, the doubts that are inside of us and being able to release it. So well, Jennifer, you know, when you talk to people and you stick a microphone in their face, usually they start speaking. So maybe you can just drop the whole microphone. <laughs> I just keep talking. <laughs> just keep talking. I think so, I'm an alien with my hands. <laughs> how, how, has has the, the how has the pandemic affected you? Yes, that's a good question. <laughs> Um, well, the pandemic, uh, it's, it's affected my work in the sense that my studio is now in my house. Uh, so uh, it's very biblical because my studio is part of, it's, it's part of um, it's the SOA art and design community and it's galleries and it's also artist studios, about 80 artists in my, are in my building. And we had a, we actually had a water main break. Five inches of five feet of water. It flooded all these galleries. It flooded our build. You know, oh, our building was saved, but um, no one was able to go to go into the building. So, oh, okay. um, for me, the pandemic has been has been kind of finding. You know, for me, go, being able to go into the studio, I can just kind of whatever's happening in the outside world, I can just kind of zone out and be in my own little world, listen to music, and when I paint, I dance too. I don't actually sit down and paint. I have to stand up. I have to sit down. Um, I'm always moving. Does it help with the avoiding burnout and stress when you do that? Uh, it's for me. I, I would say. I would say absolutely. I mean, you know, I think everyone goes through stages where they question their work, and there is that sense of being burnt out. But I, as artists, we're observers. So even if you're not creating during this pandemic time, taking it in. You know, we're observing right now, and then who knows what you're going to end up creating. Um, so while we're in your studio, Erica, can you please show us some of um, Jennifer's works? And then maybe Jennifer can explain them to us. Sure. Can you share this with us, Jennifer, your thoughts on this painting? So this piece right here, um, I started... I went through a lot of abstract works and then I've gone back to my first love, which is figures. Um, my portfolio when I went to college was all full of figures. And for me, nothing sums up what we're going through right now. Um, and it's really being in touch with um, mankind again, humans. And there's nothing more powerful than a portrait. And so I've taken this portrait, it's called Where, we're, Where Are We Going? Um, and all my figures I try, they're not models, so they're from my they're from my head. There's something that I've read, um, a poem that I read, and I want them to be mysterious. I don't really want them to be. 
a certain gender. So you can you can decide what gender she is, she or he is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as okay. I, I just flipped out there. Um, <laughs> but, but she, you know, the eyes, the the eyes are amazing. Three people over here. I know. We know the male eyes. and female, or maybe insects. That's the only sex we know. <laughs> the eyes seem amazing. They follow you wherever you go. They do. And if I so, and it's very and. It's interesting that you say um, we don't know the gender, but the lipstick looks amazing. So magnificent piece. It's beautiful. Thank you. Uh, can we um, move on to another painting, Erica, please? Mm -hmm. Oh, look at these. Oh, wow. So these are, these are more figures. And um, the first one on the left is has the idea that basically our body's always catching up to our mind. And I feel like that's the case. My mind, even when I'm like, I'm constantly thinking and I'm constantly thinking of ideas. Even when I'm trying to rest, my mind is, I know it's, I know it's still, I, I'm still thinking about things and I'll wake up. And, um, and so her, basically her head is not connected to her body and it's done that purposefully. Um, because I think that for all of us, I think our minds are always, light speeds ahead of our body and is that why you have such a dark background in both of them is that why you did it to, to, to sever your head from the body in a sense <laughs> a little bit yes i would say that's the case it's um i'm drawn to darker colors so i do have a my abstracts can be more bright but my figures seem to lend towards being um a little bit darker and when you meet are, the, are you, these in oil these are in oil, and the one that's on the right, the um, the figure came out of just everything that was happening um, that was in the news, and it was the first time that I took a figure that wasn't very Asian-influenced, um, and she came out of my head, and she was just like, you know, and she just came out and it just, it was just so vivid. It's 60 by 48, so it's large. Um, oh, I work very large, um, I, and for someone that's five two, that's that's pretty large. <laughs> <laughs> You're as tall as the canvas. I am as tall as the canvas. Well, <laughs> Jennifer, what's the greatest challenge you ever had as an artist, and how did you overcome it? I think just um, my greatest challenge is believing that I was an artist. Uh, I would say that growing up with mixed background with Asian and Western um, influence, artists are not really top of the list of you know professions to you know to. Uh, to Certainly not in Jewish families. I'll tell you that much. No, <laughs> they love you and they want you to do well. And art is. Well, you yes, know, we have doctors, lawyers, and then you're just not cutting it. Maybe in the calendar. Well, we, we grew up that way on our report cards. If you had math, reading, everything, you had music, and the last thing was art. All the way in the bottom. Yeah. All the way on the bottom. All the way on the bottom. Plays well with others. Yeah. It's, it's actually, anyway, Erica, it's, can we move on to another picture, please? Yeah. Sure. Oh, this, so this, go ahead. Yeah, this piece right here is, um, it's part of my Knots of the Mind series. Um, it's, it's, um, it's called Heaven. And it's really the idea that heaven is kind of split and it's, um, it has a dual, pers a dual um, interpretation depending on whether you're religious or you're not religious. And it really is the idea of um, kind of the melee between the heart and the mind. And depending on what, what stage you are in life, whether it's love, hunger, power, doubt, um, all of these things kind of either either embraces us or is a restraint for us. And I feel like right now we have so many restraints. So being able to create and being able to have this freedom to experiment with color and um, it's just- all, all that white light, is that like the pathway to heaven? Is that what you're trying to portray? I am, I, so I grew up Catholic and Buddhist. So- um, nice, nice combination. It is quite a combination. <laughs> and I have to say that um, my life has gone towards being more of a Buddhist in the sense that it's a life journey. So for me, um, the light the light has a lot of different um, meanings to it. I mean, it's- Abe, 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 it also depends how you're thinking. I'm looking at the fire at the bottom of the picture. Yes, what is that yeah. represent? That's scary. That's the yeah. fiery personality. You on top, you fall down to the fire. It's, well, that's, that's more traffic, I guess. Jennifer, you're also known, I believe, from for light and dark. Yes. Um, 
Can you explain that to us? Uh, you're known for being light and dark. Um, well, for me, I like the, I always like the idea of um, the duality of the light and dark. And so all my pieces have that kind of sense to it, and um, especially my abstract. And um, for me, the light and dark really represents, even going back to my Western and Eastern um, culture um, upbringing, it's kind of breaking um, taboos. So it's, you know, crossing um, cultural boundaries with language and travel. And in this case, it's light and dark. Um, and it's whatever you want that light and dark to be. All of us have these different um, things that we that we have to kind of balance together and bring harmony. I just, I just have one last question. Besides yeah. your portraits and your abstracts, what other form of contemporary art do you do? Any sculpture, architectural installation art? Because I could see it evolving from what you're doing right now. I love. I would love to do installation art. Um, I haven't. I haven't really done it. The one th when I was in college, I loved printmaking. And um, what is it? Printmaking. Printmaking. I love lithography. I think it was the idea that I had to grind that limestone over and over again. <laughs> it was it was kind of fun, but I love nature, and so um, I would love to do something that's that deals with. Um, nature, kind of bringing in natural um, materials and then doing an installation piece that also has my figures and abstract um, um, idealism. And anyway, Jennifer, it's good speaking to you. We're going to be coming back to you. We have to move on to Monica right now. We will come back to you at the end and then we could chat some more. Okay? okay. <laughs> you were fantastic and amazing as your talent and your art. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Okay. Uh, and now we are going to bring on Monica Archer. Hi, Monica. Hi, Neil. Hi, there yeah. you are. Hi, Monica. Mon Monica, what an amazing portfolio. Your works involve painting, sculpture, collage, drawings. Aside from all of this, you have no shortage of materials, being that your works include wood, paper, glass, and steel. I understand your two great passions are literature and art. You have a PhD in the fine arts. You have written many articles. Your works are beautiful, colorful, majestic, and regal looking. Welcome, and it's a pleasure to have you with us this evening. So the first question that Abe and I want to ask you is, do you, do you consider yourself a contemporary artist? Um, contemporary art. Definitely, I love everything about art. I don't have, a, I don't like the idea to put name and last name uh, of the art. Who are you? I think it, for me, is uh, I am creative person and create art, but I, I don't, don't interest in paying name number specific to the art. Many artists say that my art is contemporary. Other, other artists, other art critics say that my art is uh, constructivist, cinetic, uh, natural. Really, this is, this is important in a specific way. But for me, the most important is how I create my art, how I express myself, how I work in my art. And contemporary. You know, uh, contemporary, uh, modern art. Now, in this time, practice contemporary, practice modern art. The art is expressing yourself with different lines. Now, if you Monica, have... Neil, Neil said you work with like wood and, and steel, paper, glass. You talk about chromatic textures. What do you, could you explain to the audience what does chromatic textures mean? Oh. Example, I, I work in different textures, glass. When the glass are chromatic, when in the relation, the environment create new effects. When the light, the light is the, the light influence in the art. Example, the stainless steel, the stainless steel create new effects, but no is the stainless steel. Is the effect the stainless steel in the environment with create this new language. Example, I work 
Uh, I started my work in stainless steel in 2020 when one artist discovered how to create a color and through this color create other dimensions. But how is this process? Is the technology help for the expression of these, these ideas? Uh, I create murals and murals with textures with chromatic, uh, the paint, the oil, um, acrylic. But uh -huh. every, every piece and every technique express is uh, alone. It's like a philosophy, it's Neil. It's her <laughs> way of expressing herself, which is totally Monica, contemporary. Monica, it's written about you that constructivism characterizes much of your creations okay. and constructive this forests are essential to your works. Can you explain what constructivism is and a constructive forest is? Okay, I born in Latin America in Ecuador. Right. Uh, Ecuador have 23 pre-Columbian cultures. And these pre-Columbian, the characters of these pre-Columbian cultures is amazing. Every design in every piece is magnificent. And when learning more in contemporary art, modern art, vanguardism, I learned an example about uh, Torres Garcia. Torres Garcia created new art with the pre Columbian language. And uh, I tried learning more. And in my country, it's amazing the capacity the in the past the indigenous created art that no is considered art is a uh, considered um gra graphic or simple things, but learning through the my culture, learning around the my culture example in the Amazon. The Amazons is impressive inspiration of nature. So, so basically, constructivism is learning on your own, learning from life's experiences, not really getting it from the school, going yes. out into the Amazon. I Am learned, I correct? I'm learning about my origins. Right. My origins are amazing, amazing designs. In pre Columbian art, it's incredible the, the talents, the designs. And learning about and in the university uh realize how work with this is my acknowledgement monica there's people are asking on the viewers where are you sitting right now are you in queens are you in new york right now i live in manhattan manhattan. in manhattan i live in greenwich uh, in front of the chelsea beautiful uh, like 23rd street around there Yes, exactly. St. John's University, where I went uh, for law school. That's nice. You teach yes. now. You teach today Spanish. Yes, Monica, I do. do you consider your Do you consider your art healing? Does it heal people? Does it heal you in pain? Like therapy. Therapy for you. I don't know. If Absolutely. One hundred percent. Okay. Why? I have amazing experience in this time with it happening in my life and the other people's life. And uh, I always create a group uh, about with internet with Zoom, create a groups and I speak about the, how important is life and explain my, my art and the people learning, not only art, you know, what is inside the art, with art transmission, with art. In the future, the people have acknowledgement, example about poetry, about history, about oh, death, yeah. about many knowledge. Monica, I believe we have some of your artworks here tonight. Take a look so at it. Erica can put it on video camera, and if you can explain them to us, this is magnificent. How do you do this with pen? Time, time, curiosity, the passion for creation, and everything is in my art. It I looks like a Hieronymus bush from the 14th century. <laughs> okay. 
Oh, we, remember when I speak about the Amazon, everything this inspiration in the Amazon, uh, in my country, the landscape is amazing, the nature. It's and amazing. things are created around the, these ideas on all my philosophy, my art, is tree, leaves. Oh, these two are trees. We're looking at trees. Yes. What what are they painted with? Are do you use a pen? Do you use a brush at all? I, I use a pen. I use an ink. I use the different techniques. If the pen, the size. When this is small, I use the ink. When this is small, uh, I use it, uh, different. If for me, it's important the size, and the size uh, determine the what material is possible to use it. Wow, absolutely beautiful. Can we move to another picture, Matt? Gorgeous. Yes. And Look at the colors here. The colors are spectacular. Vibrant. Very vibrant. Yeah, and if you see, it's, more, it's always human and natural together inside the art. This I, is the I, I love that the warm colors work with the warm, and you have the cool colors in, in, within the cool colors as well. So it's, it's uh, balanced very beautifully. Yes, and this is great about a, uh, a one poem that I write. With Ten years ago, I write one poem about nature, about the importance, the feeling, the human feeling with the nature. And uh, this is uh, expressing my yard. The color represent the, re the red colors and blue colors, different colors, is representation of, about our identity about our feelings and human feelings and uh, different uh, and technique, chromatic, include together for the develop uh, my ideas. Everything is inside of my expression is putting the art. Okay, Erica, leave the picture on for a minute. Monica, yeah. it says that many of your works incorporate concepts of pre-Columbian art. Is there any pre-Columbian art, perhaps the colors, the techniques that are used in this painting? Oh, yes, yes. If you see the little images, little images is nature. And most pre-Columbian, these characters, they put together different elements. This is the idea the pre-Columbian, is integrate in the nature, color, feelings, uh, structures, and design. Well, the little icons, the little spirals, I see them in pre-Columbian art and a lot of the uh, art of the Amazon. So you are incorporating these icons in there. Exactly. And these circles is the, the idea the infinite. Everything go and return, go and return. This is idea the infinite, the life and diet, uh, the happy and no happy. These are try to represent this uh, idea. And in the relation, always in, in equilibrium with the human, the human feeling. Yep, beautiful. Have another Erica, picture. Can we move on to another picture, Erica? Look at that. Could you describe this, uh, Monica? Oh, yes. And um, the, this, the same, uh, Latin American countries have around the ocean, the Pacific Ocean. The nature no is in the jungle only, no is in the Amazon, it's inside the water. And this picture is represent the uh, when go to inside the water and this feeling. Uh, I have this experience when we go to the Galapagos, the island, and in Galapagos, I create this, this art. It is the feeling they how one element inside the water represents all nature. It's other world, but it's in our world. So this is the inspiration in the Galapagos, uh, nature inside the water. I love the texture within the blue itself. It's absolutely build up, build up. amazing. What, what material did you use in making this? Oh, I use it, I use a different um, encaustic. Encaustic is a specific technique for give volume, volume to the piece. And the elements 
represent pre-Columbian elements. Pre-Columbian elements for uh, represent the nature. Very nice. Um, I, have, I have one last question for uh, Monica. In, uh, we, if we could get her back on the screen, Erica. Um, in, it says here in 2012, you were awarded the Royal and Distinguished Spanish Order of Carlos III. Does that make you royalty? Should we call you Princess Monica? Queen Monica. Queen Monica. We're princess. <laughs> Queen Monica. This is the old title in the past, the king's use. And when the person realizes specific important things, the, the king in Spain decides to give this name to the person who collaborate in cultures and develop and integrate cultures. In this time, I organized one event with the, with the government, Spain government and organize a bigger exhibition and integrate artists of Latin America and Spain. This is the celebration of 200 years of the independence, the Spain, the Latin American countries. And the government decided, this is why not organize one cultural event and prepare the event. And the idea is the best expression of our different countries is culture. Our countries have amazing culture, literature, art. It's really incredible. So the best way is prepare one art exhibition and invite the best artists of each country of Latin America. And this is amazing experience because no it's only organized events, it's meet with famous artists and collaborate together and create projects and have this feeling together in different decades. This is really amazing. Monica, I, how, I just want to, because of time, I wanted to ask you a question. Thank God you look healthy. How has the pandemic affected you, especially here in New York? Not only do we have the pandemic, but we're not allowed to go to restaurants, we're not allowed to go to movies, everything is closed. How has it affected you and your art? Um, in my, specific in my case, I try it in my, in my self, no effect. Okay. Uh, the me depends on many people, I need to try and help other people. Beautiful. If I go down, many people go down. I need my presence and good feelings for help other people and for my art. All my negative things or my negative feelings expression in art, expression in poetry. I write a lot of poetry and everything is inside of my, is in my art, is expression in my poetry. Nice cross balance over there in the, within the genres. When you teach now in St. John's, is it all online or do you go to a class? Uh, and the first step is uh, in present, but then the university decide online. It really is very rich. Risky. Really? Only online? Everything online. Wow. And anyway, Abe, it's time to bring Jennifer back yeah, on with us to join us. And Jennifer will be joining us. Here she is. And hi, Jennifer, again. <laughs> First of all, both of you are two amazing women who not only are talented, brilliant, have tremendous careers, but you're also in the interest of helping other people, other artists, other students. And it's great having you. You know, Neil, I have to say something. You know, it says Jennifer is the co-chairman or whatever of the National Association of Women Artists of Massachusetts. And you know, if you look at our show, 75% or more of the artists we interview are women. So we should be become members of the National Association of Women <laughs> Artists, don't you think? Well, Jennifer can make us uh, an honorary member. Sure. I am the president right now, so yes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Just for I the did, time. I did mention that earlier, just to let you know. <laughs> I want to get it, and I want to pay two people. Anyway, Jennifer, Monica, First of all, we're going to be putting your websites on and where people can reach you. 
if they want to buy your works and get in touch with you. But what last words would you like to leave to the audience tonight? Jennifer, what would you like to say to the audience this evening? I would say that um, keep creating your narratives of resilience, healing, solidarity, and freedom. And be aware that we all live in this, we all live and breathe, um, and we're all part of this world together. And we're all one tenants of this world. So um, keep the landlord. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, know religions, you gotta know God is the landlord, right? <laughs> so I would say keep creating, you know, just. And by the way, our lovely and beautiful and talented artists are represented by Safira Ventura Gallery. Let's not forget that. That's why we're all here tonight. Uh, brought together and, by you and, and Alcinda. And they will come on in a minute. Monica, what would you like to share with everyone this evening? Yeah. Always are free for creation. Always, whatever is inside, create. No stop with your talents. No you stop with your with your imagination, with your feelings, always create and just have the responsibility. Like says, just do it. Once, <laughs> once this pandemic ends, Abe and I hope to get to meet you personally, Love to get to know you better. Where are you, Jennifer, right now? I'm in I'm in Boston, so I'm just Oh, that's only a hop, skip, and a jump. Anyway, let Alcinda come on for a minute. Yes. Or Lewis. There's Alcinda. Thank you, Alcinda. Hi, how are you? That's so nice. Thank you. Alcinda, we all appreciate that you gave us 15 hours notice to put the show together. Right. Um, it's, thank you very much. Let's yes, see. I really, we really appreciate, you know, guys, what you're doing because you have two artists, you know, uh, uh, four, actually. Yeah, I don't know if you girls know, but Maybe I don't know if you let us say girls anymore, you, but Neil and I are artists as well. Yes. So we don't just interview artists. Yes. And this, is, this is my gallery. Um, <laughs> this is my gallery. <laughs> gallery, right. Yes. Anyway, Erica, I'd like, while we're closing, I'd like you to put their websites on or their phone numbers where they can be reached. And remember, when the show ends, you should stay on for two minutes. They'll come back on to tell us. Alcinda, it's always great seeing you again. Yes, I would like to see, you know, to tell everyone. The, the, our mission with the Sky and the Live is to promote the artists, you know. And we are open for every artist. And uh, we represent wonderful. You see every life. You yes. can see beautiful ones. And then, you know, the the work is available, you know, for self on the through the artsy.net. It's the, like a number one platform. And then you can come to the gallery by appointment. You are you, you're gonna be here. You can you can also see Monica's Neil Kerman's get he has, he has more of it than anybody. Lewis is outside Neil, dusting yes. off the paintings. Right now. Right. Tell him to stop dusting it to sell. Dust it out the door. Got to keep it clean. <laughs> anyway, New York, yeah. guys, you have, as Erica, as Erica closes the show, you have to stay on. Right. And we'll talk to you when you come back on for a few minutes. God bless everybody. Thank you so I much. Need, I need to say thank you, Shapira Ventura Gali, for this amazing initiative, for support artists, to give new projects, for integrate artists and promotion artists. Thank you, thank you for this amazing job. Thank You're you. You're very welcome. Absolutely. You're welcome. <laughs> so appreciative. Good. Uh,